Hello, I'm a senior fisheries scientist with the Department of Agriculture and Fisheries. Today I'll be giving you an overview on the stock assessment process and results for tiger prawns, endeavour prawns, red spot king prawns, sand bugs and mud bugs. I want to quickly point out that as this is not a live video, you can pause it at any time to digest some of the content heavy slides along the way. I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners and custodians of the land from which I'm recording today. Nara, hello, I'm in Namba in Gubby Gubby country. I also want to acknowledge the traditional owners and custodians of the sea country on which this work was based. I pay my respect to the elders past, present and emerging, and I extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples listening to this video. I'll begin by giving an overview of the timeline for the prawn and bug assessments. The prawn assessments began in June 2022, when a project team was formed. The project teams for these assessments included members from the troll industry, which was a first for our stock assessment program. Six project team meetings occurred over the course of a year, which gave the authors an opportunity to receive insightful feedback from the project team. The draft reports were sent out in June, July of 2023, and the assessment findings were presented to the department's Harvest Strategy Oversight Committee in September 2023. The reports were then published in November of 2023. The bug assessments had a similar timeline. Four project team meetings and one FRDC steering committee meeting occurred over the course of a year. The draft report was also sent out in June, July 2023, and the assessment findings were presented to the Harvest Strategy Oversight Committee in September 2023. This report was also published in November of 2023. The stock assessments were guided by two project teams, one for prawns and one for bugs. The project teams comprise of many subject matter experts, including fishery managers, scientists, data specialists, and representatives from the fishing industry. Prior to commencing the assessments, we met with members from industry and received questions regarding the upcoming assessments. This feedback is summarized here on this slide and included topics such as industry involvement on the project team, the data sets used, the way we handle closures in the fisheries and more. We considered all feedback and 23 out of 26 topics were considered in the current assessments. Three red dot points were beyond the scope of the assessment. Now let's examine the spatial scope of the assessments. Target prawn species are caught within Great Barrier Reef waters. We have a map here showing the distribution of the species across the fishery. Tiger and endeavour prawns are co-caught species occupying the near shore fishing areas. Red spot king prawns occupy different fishing areas further offshore. This assessment assessed the populations in the northern and central regions, north of Stanage Bay. Historically, there have been three partial fishery closures within this area, which is factored into the modelling process. For Morton Bay bugs, both sand and mud bugs can each be considered as one continuous stock in Queensland. This assessment covered sand bugs from the northern trawl region down to 26 degrees south around Rainbow Beach. The scope of the mud bugs assessment reached a bit further, extending from the northern trawl region down to 28 degrees south, near the Gold Coast. For sand bugs, the majority of catch comes from the central, southern inshore and southern offshore regions. For mud bugs, the majority of catch comes from the central, northern and Moreton Bay regions. The results we're presenting are from a delay difference type of stock assessment model. Many other prawn and bug stock assessments use delay difference models. The model code was developed from previous assessments and was adapted to allow us to explore different time steps, enabling us to look at monthly changes within the fishery. Once the delay difference model found our results and best fit to the data inputs, we went through an extra step of analysis to explore how certain we are of those results. This process is called an MCMC algorithm, or Markov Chain Monte Carlo, which reruns the model, in our case 50,000 times each, to understand the probability of our answer being correct. This means we get a more robust understanding of model predictions and precision, but the graphs we show you might look a little bit different to what you might be used to. Development of any stock assessment model requires some key decisions to be made along the way. We know that some of these decisions can have an impact on the outcome of the model, so we developed a suite of scenarios to explore, to try different combinations of data inputs and model settings. Here's a summary of the different scenarios we modelled across the five stock assessments. Some of the modelling scenarios we used explore different treatments of catch rates to handle the effect of rezoning, like splitting the model into separate eras for each closure. 
It's getting the historic catch up and down to address the uncertainty in the historic data sets. Exploring different models, the delay difference model, the delay difference with a different approach to handling recruitment, and the stock synthesis model. And the inclusion or exclusion of historic voluntary H trawl catch rates before 1988. All up, this resulted in between 10 and 24 modelling scenarios run for each species. The first key input to the model is the catch reconstruction. Stock assessment models require us to input an estimate of catch for every year of the model, not just the years for which we have reliable data. We developed the prawn models on the assumption that the fishery started in 1958. The catch data between 1988 and 2021 came from the commercial logbooks. The catch from the recreational, indigenous and charter sectors were negligible in these assessments. For the historic catch, we had a Queensland fish board data set and information documented in Hutchison 2015, up until 1981. Hutchison provided information on prawns caught across all of Queensland. This was then scaled to the assessment region using region proportions found in Queensland fish board data. The data were then divided into species according to the species ratio found in the logbook data. And the Red Spot King prawn catch data were also further refined based on project team knowledge of the fishery at the time. For the years between this historic catch and the logbooks, we interpolated between the data sets, meaning we drew a log linear or curved line between them to link them up. You'll note here that the Tiger and Endeavour prawns show a greater overall catch than Red Spot King prawns. The bugs retained catch required a bit of extra work. As bugs, which includes Morton Bay and Belmain, were typically not targeted, logbooks typically grouped the catches of these species together. It wasn't until 2021 that trawl operators were required to report Morton Bay bugs to the species level. Fortunately, a study from FRDC, led by Dr Matt McMillan, observed strong habitat partitioning between sand bugs and mud bugs, meaning we could use the location recorded in logbook records to determine the specific species that was caught. This distribution map shows the habitat of sand bugs in blue and mud bugs in orange. The darker opaque areas are where species are known and the more transparent areas are where species were modelled and allocated based on habitat. Prior to 1988, the retained catch was reconstructed using a journal article from Clive Jones, fish board data and scaled using the number of boats in the fishery. Catches peaked in the 1990s to around 580 tonnes for sand bug and around 180 tonnes for mud bugs. The range on the horizontal axes on these plots are not the same because the fisheries were considered to start from an unfished state in different years. The other key input data set is the standardised catch rates. I know that catch rates are probably a familiar concept to you as, for example, trawl operators probably calculate them regularly as part of their business. Except instead of comparing these night by night, we need to look at them over a very long time frame and work out how to make catch rates comparable across all years. In our stock assessment model, these catch rates are used as an index of abundance, a key driver in informing us about the status of the exploitable population. Because this data set is acting as a proxy for the abundance of prawns or bugs, we want to make sure that this trend is not being biased by any external influences and that it only represents the abundance of the animals. For example, we know that fishing power differs between vessels or an operation that targets a specific species would increase the daily catch rates, but that doesn't mean that there are necessarily more prawns in the ocean. Conversely, fishing out of peak season would result in lower catch rates and give a pessimistically biased catch rate. To remove these effects, we standardise our catch rates, which is a process of removing the bias of these external influences. This is done by first filtering our logbook data to rep a representative data set. For example, boats catching only the top 99% of catch in the top 95% of grids and for fishers who have been in the fishery for more than one year. We then conduct a mathematical analysis to explore and remove the influence of each of these external effects. The effects we standardised out were whether the species was targeted, a metric for gear fishing power, which was a sub-analysis that included variables such as engine power, trawl speed, net, ground gear and board type, and other factors recorded in the logbook gear sheets that might change the trawl areas swept. We also standardised out the fraction of the grid that was available to fishing, which we know changed over time as some grounds were closed off. 
we, we standardize out the time and place of fishing, the lunar phase, the number of hours trawled in a day, and the fishing operator's vessel. Removing these effects gave us the weight of prawns or bugs caught per standard vessel night. For the prawn stock assessments, we had two sources from which we calculated the standardized catch rates. The modern compulsory logbooks from 1988 onwards, and the historic voluntary logbooks pre-1988. Here we have the catch rates per month after standardization for the prawn species. Note here on these catch rate graphs, the vertical dashed line represents the change in data sets around 1988. The earlier h data before 1988 was from a voluntary logbook, which did not include all vessels, and the data were a bit more sparse. Overall, the catches for Endeavour prawns showed a generally flat trend across all years. This makes modeling the species difficult without clear trends. Catch rates were standardized in a similar way for Morton Bay bugs. However, we have not standardized for targeting for mud bugs because they're typically a byproduct species. Two catch rates were fit to two fleets, one pre-2004 and one post, to handle Great Barrier Reef Marine Park rezoning through differences in catchability. For sand bugs, catch rates showed an increasing trend, whereas mud bugs showed a bit more variation. I'll now summarize the results for each species that we assessed, beginning with tiger prawns. On this plot, you're looking at 25,000 of the runs of the model that were done during the MCMC analysis. And the final biomass estimate in the table represents the median or middle result. For the project team preferred scenario, the tiger prawn biomass hit an overall low of 31% in 1996, then increased to a final level of 79% in 2021. 95% of our estimates on this plot range between 70 and 89% in 2021. Even though the biomass is heading in a downward direction, the current biomass indicates the stock is in a healthy state. For Endeavour prawns, the project team preferred scenario went as low as 34% in 1997, then increased to a final level of 69% in 2021. 95% of our estimates here range from 54 to 87% in 2021. For Red Spot King prawns, we were unable to provide a clear biomass result. We ran 24 scenarios covering a range of modeling assumptions and sensitivity tests. Across those 24 scenarios, only nine converged, meaning only nine were mathematically stable. These nine scenarios resulted in a wide range of final biomass estimates. For that reason, we've reported the stock level as undefined. Moving on to sand bugs, the project team preferred scenario saw the stock reach a minimum biomass level in 2000 with a steady increase since then. In 2021, the stock level was estimated to be 78% of unfished biomass, with a credible range from 63 to 94%. Again, even though the biomass is in a downwards direction, the current biomass indicates the stock is in a healthy state. Mud bugs ended up in a similar situation to red spot king prawns. 13 model scenarios were tested for the mud bug stock, covering a range of modeling assumptions and sensitivity tests. Seven of those scenarios had convergence problems or diagnostics that indicated issues. The non-target nature of the fishery, combined with fishery-dependent catch rates being the primary data set for model tuning, makes assessment difficult. As such, the status of the mud bug stock is undefined. Here's a summary of those key biomass results for 2021. Tiger prawn, endeavor prawn and sand bugs came out at 79, 69 and 78% biomass respectively and the stock level of the red spot king prawn and mud bugs were unable to be defined. These stock assessments benefited greatly from industry involvement on the project teams, and future stock assessments should continue to build collaboration between industry and government. The Queensland East Coast oil troll fishery is a multi-species fishery, and therefore with new stock assessments and the first stock assessment for several of these species, a new method for calculating troll effort caps in each region must be developed. That's all from me. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you have a great day.